just as tech pros here. I actually wasn't planning on uh, doing a podcast today, but as I said earlier in a previous episode, these things are organic and sometimes if I want to voice my opinion or uh, my insight on something, I'll try to jot it down and, you know, remember it for the next time. But this one, I just uh, just uh, had some time and I wanted to kind of get to it now. <clears throat> one thing that families need to understand and even just the general public, you know, a lot of times stories will come out and a lot of these stories are, are filled with inaccuracies. And I'm not getting into the whole, you know, uh, political aspect of fake news. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is um, when you're reporting a story. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes these reporters uh, are getting fed information that's just not accurate. And when that happens, it has an impact. It has an impact on the family members. It has an impact uh, on the uh, person who's the topic of the story. And it's quite frustrating. And normally, just the way... I've always been, you just sit back, you let it happen, and it is what it is. But sometimes, you know, I'm starting to look at things a little differently, and I'm starting to look at things as why I let them uh, get away with that. If something's wrong, call them, call them out on it. There's a lot of resources out there to contact whoever authored the inaccurate story. And, um, I mean, there's so many sources between Google, between LinkedIn, Facebook, um, searches. There's so many ways and so many tips you could use to get their email, to get the direct uh, contact information. So you could just voice your opinion. And the truth is, you, you can't be, you can't be, uh, you can't approach it the wrong way. You have to do it intelligently. Even if you are annoyed and you're angry and you're frustrated and your family's frustrated, you really got to try to take a step back and do it in a professional manner. And the reason why I say that is because if you do it the wrong way, I, I notice a lot of times things get twisted, especially nowadays, and especially depending on who's doing it. You know, if uh, you're part of, the, if you are uh, the the person's family member and you're doing it, you know, they, they'll look to twist it a certain way. You'll try to send something innocent just to say, "Hey, you made a mistake," and they'll look for any excuse they can to try to say it came across in an aggressive manner or it came across in a threatening manner. So just be very careful. You know, if you're going to take the time to really send somebody the correct information and just give them some insight that the, what they're writing is inaccurate, it's just not, it's not true. There's um, false information in there. There's nothing wrong in doing that. It's all about the approach. Try to use your head. Try to anticipate how something could be twisted. You know, it's uh, nowadays it's not so much about the truth anymore. It's about how things could be twisted to use against you. So try to out, try to be one step ahead of that. Try to overthink it before you hit that send button on the email or before you make that phone call. Just overthink how your words could be used against you if not verbalized properly and if not stated in the right way. And I and I recently had that uh, where an article was put out. And it had, uh, you know, Miss Facts in it. it. It was putting out again, and I keep using this term because to me it fits a lot of different aspects. It's a false narrative. Once again, putting something out there, letting readers and subscribers to this uh, blog or source uh, read something that's completely not true. And what's dangerous with it is, some, you know, sometimes they'll insert certain things that are true. So when somebody, an outsider, is reading that and they see certain aspects of the article or of the information that the reading is true, they make the assumption that the whole thing is true. And that's what's dangerous, you know, and that's actually, uh, I'm not saying it was done intentionally, but that's a smart tactic when somebody's putting something together or even when you, when you deal with somebody who is a, a, a liar or a BS artist, they'll use some truths. This way it almost tricks the person they're trying to talk to or trying to explain to or the audience they're trying to to capture into thinking it's it's all legitimate and everything written down is accurate. <clears throat> so my advice really is, you know, don't stand back and allow it to happen. You, you know, uh, if it bothers you, it frustrates you and you know it's inaccurate and you have somebody who's legitimate, a, a legitimate reporter or a legitimate a blogger and they are just trying to write and they're trying to report on things that are coming their way. They're just trying to uh, put it out there. There's nothing wrong in that. that. You know, that's what their interest is. That's what their occupation is. 
there's nothing wrong with bringing it to their attention that it's not true and that those affected by it are uh, are frustrated frustrated by the inaccuracies the key is just not to get that frustration um, and react on it spur of the moment and then say things that you're gonna kind of regret or or you're gonna unfortunately have used against you because they could be misinterpreted when you're passionate about something sometimes you're angry that's human nature you know you get angry you get upset and you want to react to it and you want to call somebody out just take a step back before you do it and think it through try to anticipate how your words could be used against you how they how it could be twisted how they could try to uh, make up something make up its its subliminal meaning so I, I feel I feel it's it's enough of always just sitting back and just having to endure certain things and when you see certain headlines and you see um, certain uh, uh, content that affects either your client your family member uh, you directly it, it's okay to voice an opinion if you do it in the right manner and you approach it the right way and you do it intelligently and you take your time and, and you have facts and you explain that what they're writing is just simply inaccurate and you try to try to do it removed and when I say removed I mean take your personal feelings out of it and just let them understand that it's it's not acceptable and I'm sure even sometimes when I do address certain things I'm sure a hint of uh, how I'm feeling is presented in it but that's just human nature but I try to just focus on the fact the only point I want to get across is what you're putting out is inaccurate so you really should check and you should also when you're reading these things you could almost see who's behind feeding a lot of this information when you when you start reading about like who looks who looks good and who looks bad or or um, if it's really one-sided you you know anybody who has common sense and has some brains can put together who's behind that and when people do those things to, to look for to look for to make themselves look good and at the same token trying to make somebody else look bad it's not a good character trait to have at all focus on yourself focus on things you want to do but don't but don't look to don't look to make up something to try to insinuate uh, somebody did something wrong or something was off and it's really just you know a lot of these topics I talk about or you know I could relate to personally but I'm trying to separate that for the purpose of this podcast because I don't want it to come across as a soapbox where I'm just on here and I'm uh, venting and so I'm trying to I'm trying to give it the general public a way to relate to it because a lot of these situations they can't relate to but I want them to see the human side of it and how when they read a headline to them it may, may just be a news story but there's a lot more to it and again this affects uh, potential jurors you know when, when you have a highly publicized case and there's newspaper articles everywhere and then once they become a jury you know they're instructed by the judge don't read anything don't google anything how much a jury adheres to that I'm not really sure of with phones so available and the internet it's hard to believe nobody goes on the internet the second they get assigned to a case and google something and I'm pretty sure that's not being monitored so I'm sure it's very easy to get away with doing that but let's say they don't even do that let's say they listen to the instructions what happens a lot of time is uh, the government or the or uh, the, you know whatever um, authority you're against they'll put out a lot of press releases prior they'll put a lot of a lot of things in the press just to put that tone out there and to put that angle out there so the potential jury pool already has those bias in their head they already have those prejudice in their head and that's very hard to overcome it's very hard to overcome after the fact. And, you know, they know what they're doing. They're strategically doing these things. You know, you could, you could look up the press releases. You could see who, who puts them out. You could see who's tied to them. And, you know, they're, they're smart in that way. They're very intelligent. They know what they're doing. They're using a lot of psychology. They're using a lot of subliminal psychology where they're where planting seeds. They're planting seeds and they could throw their hands in the air and say, what? You know, we just put out a release. Well, they're doing that with... A purpose they're doing that for something maybe down the road maybe they're planning on targeting somebody down the road so they'll start filling all the news outlets with stories they'll bring up things from the past about certain people just a lot of headlines 
and a lot of topics will be surrounded by an upcoming indictment or an upcoming arrest. And the general public will have that in the back of their mind. So when that selection starts, they'll already have those, their preconceived notions about the individual in front of them. And that's very, very hard to wipe that out. You really need an intelligent juror, a fair juror, someone who's able to separate themselves. Someone who's able to, to keep their, their prejudice aside. And if they are, you know, if they do discriminate, keep that aside. And that's very hard for some people to do. Very hard for closed-minded people to do. And unfortunately for ignorant people to do. If, if you really want to serve a purpose when you, when you sign up to be a jury, you really should do that. You should try to really, you know, put those things aside and fulfill your obligation of being unbiased and fulfill your obligation of, of weighing everything. And I, I think the purpose of today was just really I wanted to uh, vent in the sense that families that go through this, defendants that go through this, uh, attorneys that go through this that are fighting hard to defend, and then articles come out that are in a complete opposition of, of the reality, and they have a little bit of truth in there, which throws people off, and then you know you know you know what starts then. Then you get the gossip train going. You know you get uh, far removed hearsay, which I've spoken about before with the hearsay. You'll get almost the game of telephone. I heard this, I heard that, and then by the time it gets to somebody, it's completely different and out of whack. And I don't think these reporters really understand the damage they could do by not getting these things accurate. And they should also question their sources. If somebody's coming to you with somebody, get some backup to it. Or call, actually, you know what, if, if you're going to be a reporter, how about call the person affected? Try to reach out. Try to reach out to the, their attorney. Try to reach out to their family member. Just to see if there's any other side to it. Just to see if it's accurate. Just to see if what they're being told and what they're going to print has substance to it. Don't just go by one person or two people who are removed or on the other side of things. Go by somebody who's directly related. If they don't want to respond, okay, that's one thing. And then you could even mention that. You could say, I tried reaching out, but they didn't want to respond, and that's fine. But at least the reader will know one of two things. The person didn't want to respond because they're private, and they just, they're a private person. Or the person didn't want to respond because maybe they just didn't want to address it. There may be certain truths in there. And again, I'm, I'm, I was never crazy about addressing these things. I just always felt it's falling on deaf ears. But you know what? When it affects you personally, you got to come sometimes do things that are against your human nature to try to help somebody and to try to get a little relief. And actually, it's uh, therapeutic in some way because at least you feel you tried. And at least you feel, well, you know, he or she could write whatever they want, but I'm going to let them know that I know it's false and I'm going to tell everybody I know that it's false. And with technology today, where we have platforms to do that, it could be powerful. You know, it could backfire on some of these reporters where, you know, you start getting people taking notice. They'll start questioning these uh, articles or these blogs or these posts. And one thing I want to say is, uh, <clears throat> you know, when you have supporters, it helps. When you have people who, with common sense who really know and have lived similar experiences and went through it, they know this isn't rhetoric because they can relate to it. Unfortunately, um, some people, which thankfully, they, they never have to deal with these type of things. But the, the, the opposite side of that is they, they tend to believe a lot of the stories and a lot of the hype. That, that's the downside because they never experienced it personally. So they always look at it like, well, they wouldn't print it if it's not real. Or you wouldn't be here if you weren't, gu weren't guilty you, weren't, you wouldn't be indicted if you weren't guilty. You had to do something wrong to be in this position. And it does not work that way. I can tell you from doing this professionally, dealing with it personally, with, with uh, various sources, it just does not work that way. And that's what really started this snowball after I, you know, um, as I said earlier, I've been in business since I'm a kid. Uh, and... Uh, as I grown and matured and got involved with different businesses and now involved with the uh, litigation support and I've seen the other side and I see what defendants go through and I see the different obstacles on top of having to deal with uh, your family member 
going through the hardships of trial, going through expenses, getting financially drained, physically drained, emotionally drained. Then on top of it, you think you get a little bit of a, of a reprieve, and then you have to deal with the article aspect of it. You got to deal with the press release aspect of it. You got to real with, deal with those who want the headlines and those who want to capitalize on somebody else's misery. And you know, to me, they need to look in the mirror. If they're okay with that, that says a lot about their uh, their ethics and, and what they're made of. Uh, you know, I, I don't take pleasure on other people's uh, misery. You know, as as a friend and as a human being, if I know you, I don't, or I don't know you. I sympathize with you. I would try to, you know, if somebody need leave leave the person alone. Uh, try to help if you can. If you're that type who looks to help, try to help. Try to be supportive. If I can help in any way with certain things, I try to offer that. I I will say this though. I'm not uh, I'm not about putting you know people on blast and and going into details with um with things. But I will not allow things to go unchecked. If uh, clients or I, I, I'm, I'm helping defend somebody or personally, if things are being put out there that are inaccurate, I'm going to do my best to right that wrong. And I'm going to put out there through all of my outlets and all of my abilities, the truth behind these things. Uh, whether it's a client, whether it's uh, I'm supporting counsel and, and, and the people I'm supporting are dealing with, um, dealing with uh, a war for lack of a better term, with the other side, uh, I'm going to do my best to defend them. I'm going to use my sources to defend them and get the, the right information put out there, not allow them just to get steamrolled. I mean, when you're part of a team and you're working with somebody, you're a team player. And I don't care if I know you or I don't know you. If I'm on your team, I'm going to back your play. And if I think you're wrong, I'll tell you in, in the privacy. One-on-one, -on -one, I'll tell you I think you're wrong. But I wouldn't do that in, in the public eye or in front of opposition. Those are things you handle one-on-one, -on -one, face to face. I may not always agree with you, but I'm not going to throw you under the bus. I'm going to grab you on the side and say, listen, you messed up in my eyes. How are we going to fix this? But I'm not going to do that. I wouldn't give the opposition the, the satisfaction of knowing somebody on my team screwed up. And unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. And, and I'm learning that in this industry, in the legal industry, there's a lot of guys who are cutthroat. There's a lot of big egos and if you're going to have a big ego, you better, first off, I'm not into the whole big ego thing. It's a turn off. You know, if you got to go around with this huge ego thinking who you are, it says a lot about who you are to me. But if you're going to have a big ego on top of it, you better back it up. You better have the credentials to back that up. You can't go around like, you, you know, you're the man or you're the woman and you have nothing to back it up. You know, and you got, you know, zero wins under your belt, <laughs> you know, or, you know, in 30 years, you got one win. I mean, you can't go around arrogant with those kind of credentials. So it's all about really working together, trying to get the same focus across. And the, and the purpose of this podcast was really just to let the families know, defendants know, clients know, attorneys know. There's no reason to always sit silent. If the media is going to come out with stuff or a, a random blogger, because even if it's a random blogger and you think it's harmless, those things spread. So address it. I know I know it's not ideal. I'm not crazy about having I address, address it. I just don't like to have to do those things. But my personality isn't the type to sit back and just let people uh, uh, do as they want. And I have to sit there and just listen to the lies, read the lies, and go along with it. So it's a little bit of an internal struggle for me personally, but if, if I don't respond, that'll bother me more than if I do. I need to at least get it out. So I, I, I would suggest for those that are going through something similar, if you're getting hit with a lot of things that are inaccurate and a lot of predetermined bias and prejudice based on headlines, articles, blogs, whatever it may be, if you're in the, in the justice system and you're going through it, reach out. Reach out and let them know it's in, unacceptable. It's inaccurate. Just so they see the other side, even if it's comments, you know, on, on different boards, even if it's comments, just so the readers can see the other side. And if somebody's intelligent and somebody's open-minded, they may follow up and at least you'll get one person or two people who, who don't believe it and realize there's more to the story and it's not as cut and dry as what was written. And, that, and that's the only way to try to counteract these things. Now with 
you know, technology, everybody has a voice, everybody has an opinion, and people could do damage. You know, it, the, the internet could be a phenomenal thing when somebody's ethically grounded and has a strong moral compass. And on the other side, it could be horrible. You get somebody out there looking to do damage, looking to destroy uh, somebody, looking to rip somebody down. You know, every, everybody online is uh, is Superman. You know, they're behind a, com a keyboard or a com they're all Superman. So it's very easy for somebody to, to spew nonsense. But call them out on it. You know, call them out on it. Get some facts straight. And I have seen so many misstatements and absolute nonsense about <clears throat> people that I care about written. And it's just, I could spend all day responding to them, you know, to, but what I try to do is pick and choose my battles. When I see something that's blatant lies and they have a media outlet or they have a media source and they're trying to do a legitimate um, content-based uh, newspaper or, you know, online article, that's where I try to, I try to jump in and just explain that it's inaccurate, it's false, and I resent it. One other thing, just to close this uh, spur of the moment podcast on, is um, I think what happens a lot of the times is you get these stereotypes with different classes of people, and um, and it it does it does a lot of damage. A lot of these reality shows do a lot of damage. I mean, you see, especially for Italian Americans, they they do these reality shows, uh, mob wives, and all this crazy, stupid nonsense where they really make Italians look like moronic gavones. And, you know, they make it uh, where they're proud to have these supposed mob ties and they're tough and they're crazy and this. Meanwhile, who's an informant? Who Who's on the show is related to an informant? It's just crazy. I just don't understand why you would want to put yourself out in that kind of light. I mean, why, why not try to turn the tide a little bit? Why not have, you know, when people click on these shows, why do you want to come across... Like that, in that kind of light. You know, if, if your family is apparently dealing with certain things and they have a, 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 a if, if somebody is supposedly in your family being accused of being uh, associated with some kind of organization, why would you put that on blast like that? Why, why would you want that stereotype out there and do all kinds of harm and then act the way you act on these formats? Almost embracing it, almost thinking you could use it like as a badge where it, it, it makes you, uh, by all rights, it makes you uh, tough and it makes you important. No, that has nothing to do with you. If anything, it's doing the opposite effect. You're making yourself look moronic by doing these things and putting your, your, live out th your lives out there in that aspect. I'm not talking about regular rea reality shows. Some of them I enjoy, but being an Italian-American, I get in insulted by the behavior on some of this. I mean, it comes across embarrassing, the way they talk, the way they interact. It's embarrassing. If, if you care about your family, you're supposed to protect them. You're supposed to help them. You're not supposed to put things on blast and, and, and have all these innuendos about your alleged ties to this, your alleged ties to that, and, you know, how crazy everybody is. It's, it's absurd. That, to me, it's insulting. And I'm sure all different... Groups of people feel the same way when they're hardworking people and, and, and they're getting lumped in to certain things. You know, if, if you're a minority and people are trying to lump you into gangs and they're trying to lump you into to different stereotypes, when what you really want to do is protect your family. And if you have family members that maybe made mistakes in life or, or, or had to grow up a certain way, uh, and ha and had to do things to help themselves, and I'm not I'm not getting into my beliefs on that. And what I think's right, well, that's not the point. The point is when you go out there and you do these things to really uh, promote the stereotype of a certain group acting and conducting themselves a certain way. You're doing a lot of damage. You're doing a lot of damage. You think you're doing good with these crazy shows. You're doing a lot of damage. You're making. And I'm going to speak for my, for my group, Italian-Americans. You're making us look like morons. And we're not. We're very intelligent people. We have, you know, we work hard. I've worked hard my whole life, and I'll continue to work hard. And I, and I, and I, and I raise my, my children the same way. Nothing comes for free. you got to work for it. And I, and I tell them to get their education and stay in school 
and get as much knowledge as they can because that's where the power is. The knowledge is the power. And the, and, the, and the caliber of people that are out there has changed. It's not like it was uh, back in the day. I, I, you know, it's not like that anymore. The caliber has changed. So the focus has got to be education. The focus has got to be work hard. You want to run a business, work hard. Educate yourself on that. Focus on that business. Do well on it. You want to do a reality show? Do a reality show. Pick an Italian-American who's uh, working hard to, to get a business off the floor and what it takes. Or, or owns a restaurant. Or, or one who's going to school. Or, or pick a minority who, who doesn't have the money to go to college. And he's doing his best or her best to try to put themselves to school to, to improve life for their family. Do a show like that. You know, do a reality show. But they don't want to do that because you don't get ratings like that. You know, you got uh, these Italians going around acting a certain way, embarrassing, embarrassing the families. And uh, th that's what gets ratings. And, and that's that does a lot of damage for the good people. When you do get somebody who's Italian who then does get caught up in the in the legal system, they have to overcome that. Because the second they, they're brought in that courtroom, what do you think pops into the general public's mind? All these ridiculous shows, all these moronic shows that put, you know, Italians in, in, in a bad light. And, you know, you hear the way these people talk on these shows and how they're so forthcoming with their personal family information, just talking about their family. And that has nothing to do with... Nothing to do with the stereotype. If you want to say uh, this mob wives nonsense, that's not, I'm just talking in general. Why would you want to talk so intimately about your family? If your name's Bob Smith, why does Bob Smith want to go into such detail about his who his his dad was, or who his uncle is, or who his kid is, or who his great great grandfather removed three times over was? It's absurd. You know why they're doing that? Because they're trying to they're trying to thrive off of somebody else's reputation. Be yourself. Make your own name. Do it yourself. Don't thrive on what somebody else accomplished or somebody else did. Stand out. And if you can't make it yourself, then I guess you can't make it. But don't use somebody else who, who went through hardship and went through hard times and is in a bad position and you're going to use that to promote yourself. And unfortunately, the public eats it up. I think that show is a success. The one or two times I, I would look into those shows, it, it's, it's uh, nauseating. It's, it's ridiculous. And like I said, and then you have informants writing books, telling stories, all these crazy things. They actually make a career, and I alluded to this on a prior episode, they make a career of being a professional informant. They make a career out of it. They know down the road they could get book deals, reality shows for their kids, uh, you know, movies, whatever it is, and that's what you're gonna thrive on. You're gonna you're gonna exploit that. I don't know. It says a lot to me. It says a lot about what you're about. Stand alone. Do what you have to do. Take the morals. If you come from a good family, and you come from people who are men and and women, who who raised their kids and worked hard to make sure the kids had good values. And, and good ethics and, and hard work ethic. Use that and become something. Work hard at it. Make something of yourselves. Rely on your family. Ask your family for help. Support one another. But don't try to don't try to use names and try to use supposed status and supposed supposed labels and alleged uh, 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 alleged stereotypes to make you look tough. To make you look you know important. Because that, that actually dilutes who you are as a person. That dilutes it. Now, now you're riding somebody else's coattails. Stand alone. Do what you got to do. Work hard. And get it done. That's what it's about. It's about stop, you know, it's about getting things done and working hard. But I notice a lot of people nowadays, they don't want to work hard. They want to use angles just to keep jumping. That's, that's just not how life works. And if you don't want to work hard, there's nothing wrong in that either. But just, you know, don't expect to really go anywhere. And that's fine. I know many people who are content with that. And that, that's great. You know, that's if that's what makes you happy, you got to do what makes you happy. But when you take these, these tactics and you put these things out there that have a big impact, it's offensive. It's offensive. There's a lot of things out there as an Italian-American that I take offense to that, that really 
make us as a whole uh, appear in a really poor light. And when somebody's brought into court, after all these things are out there and all these things are aired and they get all this attention, they're brought into court and the, the majority of those jurors probably seen a lot of those shows and they probably witnessed a lot of those things and read a lot of those books and they're already behind the eight ball before the, uh, before the trial even starts. So I don't think they realize the damage they're doing and I can't relate to it. If you're going to do something, do something positive. Try to help. Try to help your, your fellow man. I don't care if you're, you're black, white, yellow, green, orange, uh, purple. I don't. If you're a good person, you're a good person. Everybody should help one another, support one another if you got good morals and good ethics. That's really what should be brought to the forefront. People with those time, th- those types of characteristics. Not to not to put out there this Gavone image of an Italian and uh, talking nonsense. And I mean, even some of these, you know crazy uh, uh, social media sites that people have where they're just making Italians look like real real morons and, and I can't relate to it it's a shame because we're an intelligent intelligent people and we're hard working and that goes with every every in, I, I have met a, a ton of people and I have made friends with all different types of people all different colors all different races and I was always taught growing up, you treat people how they treat you. You don't go by skin tone. You don't go by, by, you treat them how they treat you. Somebody's a good person. Somebody's an honorable person. Somebody's a man or a woman. They stand up. They take accountability. That's what you want to align with. And that, that's what you, want to, what you want to emulate. And in my, in my, my family, I have, a, I have a lot to be proud of very proud of where I come from. I'm very proud of who my father is as a person, who my mother is as a person. I'm very, you know, very proud of my heritage. And I stand behind it and I'll support it and, I, and, I'll, and I'll fight for it tooth and nail. And I won't allow people to, to, to create a, a uh, false sense of who somebody is. Uh, you know, my family taught me my whole life, you help people. You help those around you. Someone in need, you help them. You protect You protect your own. You protect p- people who are less fortunate. You help people who are less fortunate. Not everybody, you know, everybody's born to different circumstances. And if you could help a good person and you could give them a shot, you could help them along where they could do something with their lives, you do that. You know, you, if a friend needs you, you step up. You go help that friend out. Words are meaningless. It's actions. Words are nonsense. You want to help somebody, you know what to do to do that. You step up and you help. So, again, this was an impromptu podcast. I hope it resonated with with some of you. Um, I know it wasn't as um, content-based as my previous ones, but this was sparked by a uh, uh, by uh, an article, and it was just weighing on me, and I just wanted to give families who... who who have faced things similarly, options, and how they could go about addressing it, and just to really protect themselves when they do go about addressing it, so nothing could be twisted, and uh, and if you do it the right way, it, it'll make some noise, it'll make some noise, thanks for tuning in, Till next time. Mm-hmm.